Hey guys, welcome to episode two. So today's gonna be a short field session, uh, just running out to grab a specimen that we are going to uh, look at under the scope. Let's take a look around. So you can see where I'm going here. Things are starting to turn a little green, which is nice. And I already scoped out a nice spot that we're gonna grab. All right, I found some nice moss over here. It's kind of everywhere, but this is nice and wet. So we're gonna grab this. Uh, we don't need much, and I think you're going to be surprised at what we see. It, it's pretty amazing. I'm going to grab a couple types here. Um, just kind of peeling it away. It's too much. Just going to pop that plug back in there. I've got another type on this side of the tree. There we go. Maybe a little more of that one. All right, so not too much. And uh, I'll see you back under the scope. All right, so that was quick. So I had a little incident from the other day when we were out here. Um, I knew I should have worn long sleeves, but of course I didn't. So it gave me the idea to do a field, a field safety kind of video. Oh, there's some nice moss here too. So yeah, so a field safety video. Um, because I ended up with poison ivy uh, everywhere from <laughs> my knees to my eye. It's not fun. So I was figuring some nice tips about what to wear and how to prepare when you're going out. Um, as well as knowing your friends and foe when you're out here. And here's the slide we made of the moss. And so moss is, um, unlike most plants, uh, it's in its own phylum called Bryophyta. And it has simple leaves, which are usually one cell layer thick, as we see here. As we get in a little closer, any second here, there we go. Um, you can actually see the individual plant cells. And and within those cells, you can see the chloroplasts, which contain the green pigment, which is chlorophyll. And using the power of the sun, it converts the carbon dioxide from the air into sugar and that the plant can use for food. Uh, the byproduct of photosynthesis, as we all know, is oxygen, which everybody needs to breathe. I think we're going to move on to our first organism here. Yeah, so here we have a little protist, and this is a ciliate, which means it has cilia all over its, uh, its cell, which it uses for locomotion and for feeding. And while you can't see the cilia here, cilia are like little hair-like structures. Um, they're kind of projections of the the cell membrane around with microtubules in them for support. And we'll see a closer up um, ciliate later and we can actually see the, the cilia. And we'll just watch this guy here just scoot around for a bit. Okay. And another protist here. This one is a paramecium. I'm not sure of the 
species. I think it's caudatum, but I can't see the contractile vacuoles. Um, so you can see that they are actually pretty quick when they move. You have to follow with the focus because with the with the moss under the cover slip, it's basically like they're swimming in a giant ocean. So they can swim in all directions and your plane of field, or I'm sorry, your, um, your depth of field is really shallow. So this is the guy that you can see on the right side. I think we're gonna get in a little closer. Yeah, you can see those little hair-like structures. That is the cilia actually beating. And it looks like where they're located, those are mainly to direct any uh, microorganisms or organic debris in the water. You can see that the water is moving towards the organism, probably going towards the mouth. And I think he actually ate that little, uh, oh, and that one too. Uh, so those little refractile bodies are probably bacteria, um, which a lot of these little guys feed on bacteria, algae, and other matter that may just be floating there. Uh, you can also see some vacuoles in there. Those are the, the little clear refractive bodies in, within the protist itself. Um, could be food, could be... Well, sometimes they have... they hold the water in vacuoles. And our buddy Paramecium. So you can see there for his size comparison. And then we're going to follow the Paramecium here again. And so this guy again at the front here facing to the right, you can see the cilia beating. So Paramecium have an oral groove. It's kind of a depression, uh, which I don't think we get to see it on this guy. Um, so the cilia actually kind of force the food down towards that, that groove, and at the base of it, it has um, a little structure which kind of forms vacuoles, and once it gets full, they kind of butt off, and you can see there all those little circles in there. That's food that the paramecia has eaten, uh, as well as organelles. Um, and I do believe it is caudatum. I think I could see the vacuoles. Uh, usually they're star-shaped. Um, yeah. So you can see really well there the cilia. And again, because the water is so deep, he can go in and out of focus very easily. So they also use those cilia as a form of motion. As you can see here, he actually grabs onto that piece of debris and he's kind of going around it looking for food and away he goes. Okay, getting into some more creepy looking guys. This is a mite and related to spiders and scorpions. So it's an arachnid. We can tell because of the eight legs. So there are four pair of legs. And we get a little closer so we can see. Um, so these guys are great at climbing, but not so great at hanging out in the water. Um, they do live in the water surface of the moss, but this is obviously submerged. And here we go, just another view of him. And you can see at the ends of his feet there, he's got little tiny hooks. And that's what he uses to grab on. I don't know if it's a heat. I'm calling it a heat. But. So they grab onto the moss and they can hang on. And these are nematode worms. So there's a huge variety of nematode worms. These guys are pretty slow. I'm not sure if they're just waking up because the moss was dry. Um, but here you can see. So of the huge variety, 
Um, there are ones that are parasitic uh, on animals, some are parasitic on plants, some eat fungus, and some are bacteriophages, so they eat bacteria. And that all depends, so you can see the different mouth parts. This guy here, we didn't get it to zoom in very well, but so the top of the screen is the head, and you can see it's pretty much a smooth surface on this guy. When we go to the other one, you can see that his mouth parts are modified for his feeding method. So they also don't like light, so when they come into the field on the microscope, they usually will try and get away. So this guy here, you can see he's kind of still sleeping, but you can see there at the front of his head that the structure around the mouth is different. He's also sitting on some fungal hyphae, so it's kind of like the root structure sort of of um, fungus. So I think he starts to move here in a bit. He's starting now. So there is a pretty nice picture of the, the fungal hyphae. You can see the cells are separated by septa, which are those um, refractive lines that are there. And this is another nematode. Um, this guy's a little smaller and he's closer to the moss, so the water is deeper and he's able to move a little better. And he's actually poking his head try out there into the air bubble. I'll watch him move around a little bit. So they only have one layer of muscle, which is longitudinal. So they can usually only move in that squiggle of pattern. I think we talked about that in the first episode. Oh, who is that? I think that's going to be our star of the show. <clears throat> so he looks like an inchworm, right? But he's definitely not an inchworm. So this guy is a rotifer. And they live on the moss in that thin layer of water, they're able to uh, insist into kind of a protective shell, if you will, um, when the moss dries out. And here we go, we can see him kind of inching along, so he uses his front of his body there to kind of stick to the cover slip of the glass, actually. And then you can see at the end, he has a little foot. And there are usually two little two little toes on there that he's able to hold on to whatever he's hanging on. We'll get better pictures here in a minute. I just wanted to show you how they move. So when you look at him, it'll be great in a moment you'll be able to see his size compared to that protist. Um, I believe it was a paramecium that swims by again. And um, just keep in mind, yeah, there's the paramecium. And I think he comes back one more time. There he goes again. So that paramecium, keep in mind, is one cell. And this rotifer, while only maybe three times the length, is composed of thousands of cells. And did you just see what happened there? And that's why they're called rotifers. Uh, rotifer means wheelbearer, and so there are two, two structures that have cilia, so they are ciliated, and we'll go up a little closer. So these two structures, they appear to be spinning, so when they first were discovered, they called them wheelbearers, because they thought that they looked like spinning wheels. We now know that that's just the cilia beating back and forth. And so they are able to bring that structure into the head and then open it up when they're feeding. So these cilia, they create 
a little path of water, kind of a little vortex that goes right into the animal's mouth. And if you can see in the middle, we'll again zoom in in a moment, but you can see something that kind of looks like it's beating. Uh, that's not its heart, that's actually called its mastix. And that's kind of what it grabs the food and can grind with. So as the food enters the mouth, it'll pass that mastix and then into the intestine. As you can see, all of that, um, that cloudy area there. And there's a better picture of both. Um, the cilia beating, you can actually see a little bit of the water current going by. And then there's that mastix. You can also see that there are cilia within the oral cavity there, it appears, that are, again, pushing water towards the mastix. I wish we got to see it eat something there. All right, now is this episode a closer look, guys. All right, so thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this content or any of the animals that you saw, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. As well, we just upgraded a microscope and some new camera gear, so content should be improving quickly. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and do so. I'll leave the links down below for my website and for my Instagram. Uh, I am rebranding my my old photography business into uh, more macro and micro photography based. And we are now called Lilliput Studios, uh, a big world of little things. All right, until next time, guys, thank you so much. Bye-bye.